Hello everyone. I welcome all the learners to Yuktmind's unique initiative of 10 minutes and newspaper done. Today is 7th June and we have selected 8 UPSC relevant current happenings for the aspirants. Along with the current happenings, we try to cover related static content because that is the format in which UPSC generally forms questions. You can download the PDF from our Telegram channel or website. So let's begin. First news, the Narcotics Control Bureau said that it had made the largest seizure of LSD, a psychedelic drug in the past two decades and arrested six members of a syndicate having links to countries such as the USA, the Netherlands and Poland. The syndicate had ordered the LSD plots on the dark net and through a private messaging application named Wicca. Now what is NCB? Narcotics Control Bureau is the Drug Law Enforcement and Intelligence Agency of India responsible for fighting drug trafficking and the abuse of illegal substances. It is affiliated with the Ministry of Home Affairs which was made responsible for administering the Narcotics Drug and Psychotropic Substances Act 1985. It is to be noted that this act is based on the directive principles of state policy contained in Article 47 of the Indian Constitution which directs the state to endeavor to bring about prohibition of the consumption except for medicinal purposes of intoxicating drugs injurious to health. We should also know the broad legislative policy of Narcotics Control Bureau. It is combined in three central acts. Drugs and Cosmetics Act 1940, the Narcotics, Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Act 1985, as mentioned, the Prevention of Illicit Traffic in Narcotics, Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Act 1988. You can find these details in the PDF provided in our Telegram channel and website. Second news, according to the Union Social Justice and Empowerment Ministry report, only 508 of the 766 districts in the country have been declared free of manual scavenging. This has brought contradiction between claims of no manual scavenging in the country. According to the scheme for rehabilitation of manual scavengers, the 58,000 identified sewer workers have been given a one-time cash payout of 40,000 rupees each. In addition, around 22,000 of them have been connected to skill training programs. Subsidies and loans are available to any of them wishing to set up their own business. However, the scheme for rehabilitation of manual scavengers has now been merged with the Namaste scheme for 100% mechanization of sewer work. Now, what is Namaste scheme? The full form of Namaste is National Action for Mechanized Sanitation Ecosystem. Union Budget 2023-24 has allocated nearly 100 crore rupees for the Namaste scheme and the government is looking to enable 100% mechanical desludging of septic tanks and sewers in all cities and towns. The process of extending the scheme to all the urban local bodies in the country has been initiated. The scheme was launched in 2022 as a central sector scheme. The scheme is being undertaken jointly by the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs and the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment to eradicate unsafe sewer and septic tank cleaning practices. To incentivize mechanization, the scheme also provides for capital subsidies for workers willing to mechanize their work and become empaneled with the local body concerned. Third news, the Navy test fired an indigenously designed and developed heavyweight torpedo Varunastra with a live warhead against an undersea target. Induction of Varunastra has begun after extensive trials and will become the mainstay of anti-submarine torpedo for all naval warships, a defense source said. Now let's know a few facts about Varunastra. Varunastra is a ship-launched anti-submarine torpedo having low drift navigational systems, acoustic homing, advanced acoustic countermeasure features, autonomous guidance algorithms, insensitive munitions warhead and a GPS-based recovery aid for practice torpedo, according to the Defense Ministry. Varunastra was designed and developed by vizac based Naval Science and Technological Laboratory under DRDO and is manufactured by Bharat Dynamics Limited. What is torpedo? Now, torpedo is a cigar-shaped, self-propelled underwater missile launched from a submarine, surface vessel or airplane and designed for exploding upon contact with the hulls of surface vessels and submarines. Fourth news, speaking at the G20 Health Working Group meeting in Hyderabad, 
Jeremy Farrar, the chief scientist of the WHO, said that India had played a critical role in science and technology, development of vaccines, manufacturing of drugs, diagnostics and therapeutics during the pandemic. Secretary of the Department of Pharmaceuticals under the Ministry of Chemicals and Fertilizers noted that asymmetry of information, the lack of availability of critical materials, low attention to certain products needed by small patient populations all need urgent attention. Fifth news is analysis of role of states in achieving India's global climate targets. In the upcoming G20 forum, India is planning to propose a multiple energy pathways approach to accommodate the diverse contexts and development trajectories of countries. India's global climate pledges like 50% non-fossil electricity generation capacity by 2030 and net zero emissions by 2070 are backed by domestic energy targets at the national level. States are critical actors in India's energy transition as there is a multi-tier governance of energy production and usage. An effective transition will require bridging the ambitions and implementation gaps between the centres and the states. Simultaneously, national ambitions need to factor the varying incentive structures, processes and institutional capacities at the state level. Now, what is the significance of states in achieving India's energy transition? First point. India's achievements on its 2022 target for 175 gigawatts renewable energy offer some insights into the complexities. Gujarat, Karnataka and Rajasthan are the only states who met their individual targets. About 80% of the current renewable energy capacity is confined to six states in the west and south of India. In a federal setting, states matter for four functions critical to energy transition. First points. States as spheres of implementation are critical to the realization of national targets. While the center may set goals, the realization of these goals often depend on how they are aligned with state priorities and capabilities in our federal setting. The legacy issues in the electricity sector of states such as high losses, unreliable supply and service quality if left unaddressed could be exacerbated by the transition. States as laboratories of policy innovations have been instrumental to India's energy transition. For example, early initiatives by Gujarat and Rajasthan on solar and Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu on wind energy technologies have contributed significantly to renewable energy uptake at the national level. PM Kusum is an adoption of successful state experiments on the solarization of agriculture at a national scale. States could also be roadblocks to national goals, particularly when the goals are perceived to be misaligned with the state priorities. Central mandates to update the state action plans on climate change, recommendations to set up state-level steering committees for energy transitions, and regular meetings of the central and state energy ministers reinforce the importance of states. Central agencies have also developed multiple indexes that rank states on different aspects of energy transition. For example, Niti Aayog launched the State Energy and Climate Index, which is the first index that aims to track the efforts made by states and UTs in the climate and energy sector. As a complement to the techno-economic discourse, there is a need for state-level framework to understand plans, actions and governance processes towards an energy transition. Sixth news, Iran reopened its embassy in Saudi Arabia after a seven-year closure reaffirming a Chinese brokered rapprochement. The Iranian mission resumes in its former premises in Riyadh's diplomatic quarter near Syria's embassy, which is also expected to reopen soon following Saudi outrage to Damascus. Iran claimed on June 6 that it had created a hypersonic missile called Fatah or Conqueror capable of travelling at 15 times the speed of sound, adding a new weapon to its arsenal as tensions remain high with the United States over its nuclear program. Seventh news, China and Russia conducted joint air force patrols over the Sea of Japan and the East China Sea on June 6, as South Korea said it had deployed fighter jets in response to warplanes near its airspace. South Korea said four Russian and four Chinese military aircraft had entered its Air Defense Identification Zone, ADIZ, prompting it to scramble fighter planes. Now, what is Air Defense Identification Zone? It is an area wider than a country's airspace in which it tries to control aircraft for security reasons, but the concept is not defined in any international treaty. The incident comes in the background after the defense ministers of South Korea, Japan and the USA 
agreed to set up real time data sharing on north korean missile launches by the end of the year south korea has supported western sanctions on russia over the war in ukraine and has sent humanitarian aid to kiev china says it is a neutral party in the ukraine war it has been criticized by western countries for refusing to condemn moscow and for its close strategic partnership with russia now analysts says that the china holds the upper hand in the relationship with russia and that its sway is growing as moscow's international isolation deepens after russia ukraine war beijing and moscow were cold war allies with a tempestuous relationship but in recent years have drawn closer especially in the economic and military realms you can find the details in the pdf provided eighth news india's internet economy like b2c e-commerce firms online service providers edtech companies and so on will hit 1 trillion dollar in value by 2030 up from 175 billion dollars in 2022 according to a report by google bain and company and temasek as per the economy of a billion connected indians the growth would be driven by more indians starting to transact online and the overall expansion of digital businesses the key thrust would come from tier 2 plus locations the changes were expected to be the most pronounced in smaller towns and rural areas in terms of impact on the value of the internet economy as only 13% of the indians lived in metro and tier 1 cities health tech and insurance tech both sized at or less than 2 billion dollars today will demonstrate the largest expansion thank you for watching let us, let us know your feedback, feedback in the, in the comments, comments below keep visiting, visiting our website, website telegram, telegram and twitter, and twitter. Thank, thank you for watching, watching.